Between 2014 and 2016, Sean Murray appeared to be a sort of restless ideas machine, appearing in interviews with the express purpose of pouring out whatever was in his mind, rather than what was safely calcified in code on his computer. It was, by his own admission, a mistake. The creator of No Man's Sky says he messed up the easy things. He talked about the game too early, talked about features still in development. At the time, he didn't understand why AAA companies had their spokespeople stick to scripts. Now he does. Murray doesn't talk about what he's making anymore. He talks about what he's already made. But, unlike most games, the public relishes talking about how No Man's Sky was created and released as much as the playing of it. I recently got the chance to speak to Sean Murray, and for half an hour I sat back as he worked through the evolving dream of No Man's Sky, the nightmare of its release, and the reality of where it stands two years down the line. Sean Murray is not a liar. All YouTube roads might lead to a video on that subject, but in retrospect it feels a short-sighted accusation. There's entirely reasonable debate over whether it should have taken as long as it did, but there's also no doubt that many of the features promised in those early, effusive interviews have, by now, made it to No Man's Sky. In fact, it's actually fairly astonishing how closely the latest update, Next, has patch notes that resemble two-year-old lists of Murray's lies. Full multiplayer, player-owned freighter fleets, special ship classes and ringed planets. They're all in there, just surrounded by slightly less flowery adjectives these days. It's tempting to say that Next is an attempt by Hello to finally release what No Man's Sky promised to be in 2016, but Murray disagrees. In fact, he seems to put that grander vision down to, at least in some cases, abandoning what he wanted No Man's Sky to be in the first place, a single-player survival exploration experience, and trying to accommodate what various different types of players wanted out of it. Take the Foundation Update's creative mode. In removing the restrictions on players doing what they wanted within the game, it also removed many of the features Hello Games had spent years working on in the process, but it also appeased a swathe of audience that might otherwise have dropped away. There's a new development theory in action at Hello then, which can be summed up as some for us, some for them. Each update sees the developers adding a little of what they want, but also responding directly to where the community wants the game to go. When No Man's Sky added base building, some players complained that it felt antithetical to the wandering spirit of the game. Why would you want to stay on one planet when there's a literal galaxy of systems to pass through? But Murray sees that as a headline change, while the rest of the same patch saw fixes and tweaks for numerous community requests. Next represents the culmination of that development style. Multiplayer is by far the most requested feature for No Man's Sky, but Murray doesn't think it could have comfortably existed without the Hello team's own additions. This seems to be Murray's key discovery as a developer over the last two years, that those flights of fancy back in the day weren't the be-all and end-all of what No Man's Sky could be. His vision of a single-player galactic survival game may have come to pass, but it was just one view of what Hello could make, and letting go enough to allow others to realise their own fantasies within the game's galaxies has been as much a boon as making the game he set out to. But perhaps what Sean Murray likes most about the current state of No Man's Sky is that it's become the game, not him, doing all the talking. He wishes he'd realised that a little earlier. From its earliest announcement, No Man's Sky was always a strange engine of potential, a set of overlapping ideas that seemed to combine, react and metabolise entirely different game ideas in different people's heads. Obviously, a major element of that comes down to how Murray talked about it. The literally unimaginable scope of the idea, coupled with its headline billing from Sony, led to a lot of people forming ideas about a game that simply didn't exist yet, seemingly even Murray himself. But Murray says interviews were an unwanted byproduct of early success, and the reaction to what he said in them snowballed into even more interviews. There's something strange about revisiting Murray's earlier public appearances, knowing that he didn't enjoy them. Suddenly, that sheepish smile looks a little more rictus, the constant movements more like cascading nervousness than bobbing anticipation. Perhaps in some worried way, Murray knew what might be coming. 
Stretch that misplaced anticipation over the course of years and the seismic reaction to the launch version of No Man's Sky begins to make sense. Like trying to explain a dream, this game could never be quite what it promised to be in your head. Murray says it's the first game he's ever made that had some players immediately proclaim it their favourite game of all time, but the same bundle of code would also garner him death threats. He's surprisingly willing to accept his own part in that. There's a conflicted pride in how Murray talks about the launch version of the game. He made what he set out to, but he clearly understands that it wasn't what many were hoping for. He aimed to make a game that felt lonely, making you feel small against a practically infinite backdrop. But with an average team size of six, he sees the version of the game that launched as lacking depth to justify traveling across its breadth. But there's a quirk that sets No Man's Sky apart from other games, which makes it quite so interesting to talk about even years down the line. People's fury at the launch version wasn't as much about hating what the game was, as hating what it wasn't. The team realised that much of what people were complaining about could be fixed or added, and so the updates began. Four free editions have been a conscious attempt to hone the game into something like those dreamed-up pre-release versions, to add depth to that breadth. Hello knows that it has a dormant install base beyond that of most games by a developer of its size. It's just a case of getting them to come back. Some games that achieved similar success around the same time have had one, even two more sequels since release. People don't play them anymore. No Man's Sky has a different philosophy going forward. Sean Murray is very keen for you to know that Next isn't a finale or a sequel, but a step. Hello Games might not want to talk about what it's making, but it absolutely is making new things. So is there any word on an overall vision, if not specific features? Going by Murray's comments, you can sum it up in a word. Bigger. Murray now seems to see his original, lonely vision for the game as a piece of a wider idea. You can still play that way, but Hello aims to add much more to the template, and add it more frequently. He knows some see a game constantly in flux as a negative, but he seems to prefer to think of it more like evolution, adapting and improving. That won't stop for the foreseeable future, and, from the little I can glean, multiplayer seems to be where the team's focused for now. It feels appropriate. The early game was designed to be lonely, and I imagine Murray was lonely himself, weathering the brunt of the Twitter storm in those first months. Multiplayer finally adds light and laughter to his quiet galaxy. It's probably no surprise that he wants to stay in that headspace for a time. But for all this artistic vision, there's always the looming question of money. No Man's Sky has been a one-time purchase for two years, a true rarity in the current industry, and while each update presumably brings with it a fresh wave of buyers, there must surely be diminishing returns. How sustainable is this model? The answer, at least for now, seems to be something along the lines of, who cares? Honestly, it feels like the simplicity of releasing new updates for free is what Sean Murray needs. Next represents No Man's Sky at its highest ebb since just before release. The community's thriving, the reaction has been positive, the future is bright. After the unimaginable gamut of development, top-tier promotion and fire and brimstone reaction, the relative quiet of intermittent updates, whether or not they make cold business sense, feels like a perfectly reasonable choice. Murray is the same man he always was, but he has a new outlook, and it's working for him, and for Hello as a whole. No Man's Sky isn't an engine of potential anymore, not subject to the dreams of its creator nor its fans. It's just a game. You like it or you don't. Murray's happy not having to talk about it in the future tense. Happy that all he has to do is show people what he and his team have made, see their reaction and make some more. He's happy not doing interviews. I don't expect to talk to Sean Murray again for some time. And that's okay.